I want you to look in my eyes. I want you to ask you an honest question. Do you want this to keep going? If it's going to help them, yeah. Okay. Bring up Prince. In this video, you're going to see Prince and this brown dog get into a fight. I never enjoy these type of sessions. They always make me nervous. This brown dog is going to overwhelm this sweet little white dog, and that's going to show me what type of dog I'm dealing with. This brown dog is like a kind of a one in a hundred dog. He has no aggression, but he can be aggressive, and he can be overwhelming, and he can be a bully. A lot of people ask me for this. They say, I want prince to correct my dog but it's actually not right for their dog because it's often based in fear and it's never right if a dog corrects another dog when it's based in fear or it's in a perverted sense of a job and i don't really love to have a dog correct a dog when they are trying to do a job they just don't know how to do it sometimes it can work but in this video i'm going to explain this dog's personality type I'm gonna show you how I set this dog up for success and why he needed to lose the fight to Prince and to me and to the owner to some, some degree. There are some fireworks in this video and at times it's not gonna be easy to look at. Now watch the hit on the gate right there. I'm gonna slow it down for you. If that fence wasn't there, this would have been a hit to the side of Prince that would have caused a fight, and that was the intention of the hit. You're gonna see this dog meet multiple dogs, and you're gonna see a changing point in the middle of this session. He's gonna be jerky, overwhelming, to the sweetest dog in the world. Then he's gonna meet Prince, who is not gonna put up with his nonsense. They're gonna get into it. Then you're gonna meet him, meet other dogs, and he is going to be pretty cool with those other dogs. This is nature. This is the way organisms behave. But helping a dog like this is not easy. That's why I'm launching the Beckman Aggression Program. I'm gonna teach you to be the type of person that can help your aggressive dog. If your dog has the potential to bite people or dogs, this is the program for you. Email beckmanventures at gmail.com to be put on the list. I'm gonna to give tons of videos, have lives, a community section for support. It's basically the single best aggression reduction program there is. You're gonna see him approach every dog like this and this is simply not appropriate. This is how fights are caused by a non-aggressive dog. This dog actually isn't aggressive, but he can be aggressive. He is too pushy, he tests every dog. He says, if you wanna fight, I will fight, and he will fight. His one friend in the world is a 120 pound Alaskan Malmute that flipped him and put him on his back. And now they are friends. That is the information I know at this point of the session. So basically I know that he needs to run against a brick wall in order to get better. If he's a jerk to this dog, yeah. he, needs to be, he needs to be corrected. Do we, do we agree? Uh, totally. It's, the, it's not Prince. It's not yeah. some big male that's got balls. Right. This is, you cannot be freaking mean to this dog. Right. And I, want, I just want you to be on board with that, yeah. which I know you are. This is one of the worst meetings I've ever seen without there being aggression. So there's no aggression in here. It is just full bore, overwhelming force and no hold back in the dog whatsoever to the point where the little dog was overwhelmed. And so I'm gonna have to give this dog a correction and Prince is gonna have to give this dog a correction. And that's the only way he is going to learn. I'm gonna give him a correction right here. He met that Alaskan Malmute, the owner did it, and the Malmute flipped him and overpowered him. So I know that now, so I'm gonna overpower him. He needs to be overpowered. He's 85 pounds of pure muscle and athleticism. He only understands being overpowered. It's literally the only thing he understands. And if you watched him with that little white dog, you get it. There, there's no other method but pushback. Oh, but Joel, he doesn't understand how to meet dogs. That's exactly right. And so he needs to understand with force from me, force from the other dogs, that's the only way. There's no force-free way to do this. It doesn't exist. This dog needs the nuclear option because nothing slow will work. If you're looking to do this for a living, and I don't know why you would, because these type of sessions will literally take years off of my life, but if you're looking to do this for a living, email beckmanventures at gmail.com and look and tell me why you want to sign up for the Beckman coaching program to become a professional dog trainer. I have a community section, lives each week. You get tons of videos and you can do this for a living. Email beckmanventures at gmail.com. You're a lot, dude. You're so much for dogs. Oh my gosh.
Come on, bro. You get out right there. And you know what got him to swim? His wanting to just A to B it to this dog. Like he just, he's like, I don't care what's in front of me. I'm getting to that dog. Not to be bad, just to meet and touch and overwhelm and smell. And he wants to be, he wants to like take them in. So his personality is basically like really rough, really physical, really, he's kind of over the top. Then you couple that with, with not in any way understanding what a dog is. And then you get this. The good news is he is simply, he's not like in my definition of aggressive, aggressive. I mean, he's just, he's a pursuer, but there is gonna be an aspect of like, we're the biggest and baddest, not you. Cause he does think he is. I mean, he really does. Here's another inappropriate fight causing approach. He runs into the fence and the other dog doesn't like it because he knows what's up. And you're going to see multiple dogs come out and get mad at him. Now, is that an indictment on him that dogs on another side of a fence get mad at him? No, I have to take in what I'm seeing and the whole picture of what I'm seeing and what I've heard. So here's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a dog who was mean to the nicest dog in the world. I'm seeing a ton of eye contact. I'm seeing a dog who on the leash pulls me wherever he wants to go. Yes, this dog needs more quote unquote training. That's the least of our concerns. The personality of the dog is our biggest concern. You're, that's not Prince, that's another Doberman. You're gonna see that dog bark at him as well. Then you're gonna see him try to push through my legs. And that's gonna be a learning opportunity for him right now. So dogs don't love him. That is a, a That tells us something. It also tells us that he's getting better with the white dog. He is now desensitized to the white dog. The dog did not push back on him. I pushed back on him for being rude to the white dog, but there is some pushback in his life. But the most direct way to help a dog like this is for the dog to push back on him, to for the target to tell him he can't do that, not some dude on the other end of the leash. So he's gonna push through my legs because he's a pusher. pusher. He's a perpetual line, line pusher, and I'm not gonna let him do it, and I'm not, other dogs aren't gonna let him do it to find a crack by my legs and be forced through. So what does he do to dogs? He goes, he just kind of forces his strong body in there. So he just said, I'm gonna go by you. And I said, I'm, you, you can't go by me. Like I'm standing here. He's gonna do it again right here. He needs to know that other things are strong. He knows he's, he's so strong and he knows it. He needs to know that other dogs and people are strong like, too. And so then all, all I'm trying to do is when he tries to do that with me say, no, things, pu things push back. Malmutes push back, people push back. Other dogs, he was a lot to this dog and this dog chose to be a foot away from him. He was a lot to this dog at the fence and Prince didn't hate him. That's the no aggression part of him. This dog, he was so mean to this dog in a way and this dog chose to be a foot away from him. Like his nature is good, which you knew. But boy, he needs to just meet so many damn dogs. This is not just about other dogs telling him what's up when he is jerky to them. He also just needs to meet nice dogs. But where do you find these nice dogs that are gonna allow another dog to come up to them or owners that are gonna allow that? It's gonna be very difficult. That's why it needs to be done with a professional. This stuff is tough. You can't go to a dog park and do this. He needs to meet nice dogs. He needs to get pushback from other big dogs. That is the formula for this dog. If you can't do that, you need to get, he needs to get pushed back from the owner. Now, here's where the crazy part's gonna happen. Look at this approach. It is not a good approach. Who went to who? Did Prince go to him? No. Unfortunately, I have to neuter this video for YouTube, but you're gonna see the end of this, and then you're gonna hear what I have to say to this guy. I have never pulled someone over and said, do you want this to continue? But that's what I do with this client. And he says, absolutely, if it's gonna help, and then you're gonna see the help. And you're gonna see this dog literally be a different dog from what you've seen this entire session. This is because of this moment here, this dog is different. Okay, I'm gonna ask you, I want you to look in my eyes. I want you to ask you an honest question. Do you want this to keep going? If it's gonna help him, yeah. Okay. Okay. Bring up Prince. Methods and strategies can be proven or disproven. Is this dog better after meeting Prince and nobody getting hurt during that scuffle? Is he better or is he worse or is he the same? He's a different dog because another dog pushed back on him. This will transfer to other dogs in his life in a reduction 
in the approach and a reduction in the pushiness. Look at his backup right here. We have never seen backup from this dog. I give the owner a thumbs up. Backup. That doesn't really exist in this dog until Prince pushed back on him. You're going to see a bark right here. I don't care about this bark. That is a normal dog, kind of forward, kind of backup bark. We saw what he was. We now see what he is. We see the hold back in him. That made a serious impression on his brain that will stick. That doesn't mean he's going to be perfect with every dog. But look at him with these two dogs now, even the white dog. And you're going to see him meet more dogs that he doesn't know at my facility and be better. You don't have to believe anything I say. Not a single word that is coming out of my mouth during this voiceover do you have to believe. All you have to do is watch the video. Watch how he approached these other dogs. Watch how he was quote unquote jerky to these other dogs, to every single one. Watch after he got smacked back by another dog. He tried to start a fight, the other dog fought back. And now look at the video. That is all you need. Trust your eyes. You are being gaslit by a, by a society of people that claim that there are no aggressive dogs and that these newfangled methods can fix those dogs when in fact another dog or a strong person like this owner, he is one of the strongest people that has ever come to me. And now look at this dog meeting another dog and backing up. Where did this backup from him come from, guys? Where could it possibly have come from? Oh yeah, what's that one thing that happened to him where a dog literally went back at him, it created backup where there was only forward. He only knew forward. And then he was forced. This is not Prince, by the way, uh, against the other dog. This, he, he, he learned something. He had not met many dogs. He thought he could do with them what he will until the Malmute that the owner told me about, and he did that all himself. The Malmute pushed back and Prince pushed back. Does that mean this dog is fixed? No, we need more dogs. He actually needs to just touch them and meet them. And then he's going to occasionally go at them and they need to go at him or the owner or me or you at home need to say, knock that off of, of which you, you've seen a couple times, but it is better from the target. It is better from the dog, but I realize how hard that is. I don't expect any human being yeah. or any trainer to know how to do this, yeah. nor have the dog to yeah, do this. I really don't. But I am but I am saying that it's the best way. And what do we learn from the dogs that push back on him and he gets, look at that. We'll take that all day long. It was backwards. Does he look perfect? Is there no eye contact? Is he doing play bows? Is he being submissive? None of that stuff, but he has backup in him where there was no backup. For those who have a dog like this, you're probably not going to be able to run into a prince or a 120 pound Malmute that's going to put him on his back, even though that's the best thing for him. So you're going to be the 120 pound Malmute. When the dog does something to the other dog, you're going to give a correction. You're going to walk away. Your dog is going to go, no, but I want to go see that other dog. I want to see that other dog be turning their head. You're going to say, I don't care. Sit down, give them a correction, wait till they calm down, bring them back, let them do something and do it again over and over and over and again until they understand that that behavior is unacceptable and there are consequences to your unacceptable behavior. But you have to understand your dog. I took, you know, 20 minutes for this dog to get with another dog so that I knew that this dog was actually being a jerk and it wasn't just some under socializeness or fear or whatnot. Now to original audio talking about loose, body position. A little. Boom. Oh, not as long, just loose. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how you want to be. And then that right hand is ready. If he goes here, which he's not because he's perfect with this dog, then that right hand is going boop. That's what I was ready to do there. He was in my left hand. This dog was there, and I was just ready to go wah that way. So you're just ready to go that way. That little touch on the head doesn't embolden him, but you actually you end up leaning and then you're you're not in a position to like go the other way. Does that make sense? You like change your your body. Are you an athlete? Was. Yeah, like so like you're out of position at this point yeah. for your plan was to go here. Right. You're now leaning this you're not as ready totally. to go the other way. Yeah. This stuff isn't easy. I totally understand that, but it is the way of the world. Pushback, being corrected by another organism, 
for jerky behavior is the way of the world, but the dog has to understand what it's for. That's why the target is the best one to give it. If the target can't give it, you as the owner are going to give the correction and you're going to give it in a no nonsense way. It is not about pain. You don't want any pain. You want them to feel your strength. I hope this video helped you in some small way. If it did, subscribe to the channel.